What is OCD and do you have it? Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. Yesterday, we released a brand spanking new music video on the Rat and Link channel. It's called My OCD, a song, and it features Link playing Link and me playing a man in a mysterious white coat. And uh, lots of things are organized and it's very pleasing. So, check that out. Also, I invite you to download the song on iTunes and rate, rate and review the song Please properly. Do that. Thank okay. you for that. So, uh, the conception for this song came from something that we have noticed. We've actually noticed it quite a bit here on Good Mythical Morning, but I've noticed it throughout the, the internet, and that is every once in a while, there will be a little something wrong with one of us. Yeah. Uh, it might be that our hoodie strings are a little bit off kilter or the camera isn't quite like the mic, centered. the mic's not right in the middle. And are like maybe my mug is right here, and then Link's mug is right there. Well, that would be that would be good. Yeah. And I'll this. be gesturing like this, and, and people like, are like, oh "Gosh, move your mug!" They're like, "Guys, get your hoodie string straight. Get the microphone centered because you're driving my OCD crazy, like it's a pet or something." So this is something that I mean, it's people talk about this all the time, and then. Uh, I noticed there were all these lists on the internet, 39 images that will drive your OCD crazy. crazy. And again, it's the same kind of stuff that we featured in the video. Um, things that are off kilter, things that are unbalanced, things that are you know, turned the wrong way. Right, so it's a common sentiment across the internets right. that if something's not quite right, I, I can't make it right, but the best I can do is comment about it not being right. Right, so that so that music video is our attempt to kind of represent that mentality and to show you some things and then give you the satisfaction of Link straightening them out. But here's the question, here's the technical question, friends. Is what we represented in the video OCD or are people using the term OCD too lightly? Hmm, hmm. Now, we should say right off the bat that OCD is an actual disorder that I mean, people, maybe you or someone you know out there has, is clinically diagnosed with OCD and it rocks their world. So yeah, we wanted to say right off the bat, that happens and th the mission of our music video or this conversation right now is not to make light of those people who, who suffer from, legitimately suffer from OCD. So that being said, and let's I can have also, a conversation. I can also say, no joke, my wife, has been diagnosed with OCD. So, and this is something she struggled with her entire life and that, you know, she, she's she's dealt with it or she continues to deal with it, but she's experienced a lot of victory over it, but I know a little bit about it just from, from her dealing with and it. And when you pitch the idea. And it gives me the right to talk about it. No, when you talked about the music video or the idea for it, she was like, this sounds hilarious. I think you should, right. you should go for I it. I asked her, I said, is this insensitive to do this? And she was like, no, it's comedy, go for it. It's comedy. Okay, so. Obsessive compulsive disorder, obviously that's what OCD stands for, so I'm gonna break that down a little bit for us. Uh, the first part. Can you start with disorder? Uh, and I'm gonna start with obsessive. Okay, so an obsession. An obsession could be. Start with compulsive and just really screw with people's I don't minds. wanna do that. I'm gonna start with obsession. Okay, do it. Okay, an obsession could be any recurring thought or idea that keeps, it is recurring. In other words, you continue to think about it and you obsess about it. It could be a number, it could be a color, it could be whether or not you're, you've are you contaminated your hands, it could be whether or not you've hurt someone. There are different categories that people kind of put these obsessions into, but in reality, an obsession could be absolutely anything. It could be like, I am obsessed, I have a fear of the color red, so anytime I see red or I, see somebody wearing red, I think something bad's gonna happen. I don't wanna wear red, I never, I stay away from red. Can almost take on a superstition kind of quality to it. Or it could be one of the most common uh, obsession, which is, I think I might have contaminated myself, so I need to wash my hands. Dirtied myself. Yeah, and it, and it, can, it takes all kinds of different forms. It's not just those ones that you've heard about. It can be like religious thoughts that people have. It could be thoughts about the devil. It, it can go into lots of really dark places. So that's the ob obsession. Uh, ideas, thoughts, impulses, or images that keep coming back, and these are upsetting. These bring about some serious anxiety, and, mm -hmm. they, and, they, and they keep happening. Okay. The second part, is the compulsive, the compulsion. And that is, 
In order to cope with the obsessions that people have, they engage in these repeated, almost ritualistic behaviors to deal with these, to relieve the anxiety. Like so, I'm obsessed with the light switch, well I'm not personally, but let's say I was obsessed with the light switch being turned off, but I, I'm, I have a compulsion to turn it off repeatedly until it feels right. Well, not exactly. That m Maybe that would happen. I have to keep flipping the light switch 18 times before I can leave the room. Okay, maybe it could look like that. But it could also be like, I think I might have contaminated, my, contaminated myself, so I'm going to wash my hands repeatedly. I'm going to wash my hands more than I need to. I'm compulsed to or, or compelled to. I, in order to keep my house safe, I may go back and check and check and check and check to make sure that I lock the door. Or, and it does have to do with exactness, I can't have anything that is out of order and I'm constantly thinking about that and constantly doing things that bring those things in order. Now here's, here's the thing. Now isn't that kind of normal? People obsess about things, people have concerns about things, and then people do things to relieve the anxiety that's associated with those things? Isn't that yeah. just a normal thing? Well yeah, lots of people do these kinds of things and that doesn't necessarily mean you have OCD. It's when the obsessions and the compulsions consume you when you don't have control over them, but they have control over you, and they actually begin to affect your, your quality, quality of life. life. Right, so they take place, they, you know, they get in the way of your work, they get in the way of your school, they get in the way of your relationships. That's when you're getting into what might actually be a disorder. And I'm, listen, I'm not a psychologist. No. And we're not, this isn't medical advice we're giving, but this, yes, is, just, is. this is just sort of where the, where the research is right now. Now, I like to keep things organized. I mean, I'm not gonna go up to a stranger and fix his hoodie strings or fix someone else's candy, but I'll organize my own candy. Does that mean to, I have to OCD? That extent, you'll stack it up like you did in the video? If I'm, well, no, but I'll, I will definitely fix my closet. Okay, well. Like, look at my closet, it's it's right, buddy. Well, here, And it makes me feel good, here's but do I thing. have OCD? No, so uh, in doing the research for the video, or for, the, for this uh, episode, I actually learned about something that I'd heard about, but I thought it was the same thing, but it just shows my ignorance. It's OCPD, Obsessive Compulsive Personality Disorder. So it turns out, while they sound very much the same, it's a totally different disorder. They're not even technically related. They have some crossover, but it's a totally different thing. What is it? OCD is an anxiety disorder, meaning that those obsessions that we talked about bring about anxiety, and then people use compulsions to kind of deal with those, and it's like repetitive compulsions, repetitive thoughts. Okay. Whereas OCPD is a personality disorder, and these people who have it, which is a lot more common, first of all, they don't see it as a problem. It doesn't bring about anxiety, it's a personality, it's a disposition, it's a tendency to keep, keep things, well basically it's just a rigidity about anything. It could be a moral rigidity, it could be a rigidity about cleanliness, it could be a rigidity about symmetry and orderliness, that's one of the things that it takes, that it manifests itself most often. Now, so it turns out, one of the things I've learned is that this OCD phenomenon that we kind of made fun of in the video, which is not making fun of the disorder, but making fun of the way that people characterize themselves as having OCD anytime they see these things. Mm -hmm. They're actually talking about OCPD more likely than OCD, because these are not obsessive thoughts and repetitive compulsions that we're talking about in the video. It's this tendency to want to straighten things out. Now, do you have OCPD? Well, I don't think so because, first of all, I'm not a professional, I'm not here to diagnose you, but the D in both of them, disorder, indicates that this is something that affects your quality of life, this is something that is getting in the way of you living a normal life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, so I think- Just because think, you're really opinionated or, or picky or organized it does doesn't, it, yeah. doesn't translate into a, into a disorder. But if it's really getting you down, you probably need to go see somebody, a professional, to get them or to diagnose you. Or take, take an GMA. online survey. They or should. You could do that. You could take a survey. Uh, just go On see somebody. On the internet. Somebody. No, don't do that. Now, I always gave myself um, the label anal retentive. And I have done which, that. Which I didn't, I you. wouldn't do that publicly. <laughs> because it, I'm not, I don't like have a medallion that says anal retentive or a t-shirt. Right. But if I were gonna s describe myself, and I like, I describe myself as frugal and maybe cheap, and also separate from that, anal retentive. Well, I'm glad you asked that, Link, because I did a little research on that too. So anal retentive is something that Sigmund Freud came up with, you know, uh, psychologists, uh, you know, earlier last century. Okay. And his whole I've thing- I've heard of Freud. He had all kinds of theories about the way that things happen in childhood and your relationship with your mother and that kind of thing that indicated different disorders. He thought that people who experience conflict between the ages of 18 to 36 months 
months, that's when you're developing control over your bowels. If you experience conflict during that period, you could become an anal retentive person. That means a person who literally retains their feces. You're holding your poop in, and this is an indication that you're kind of tightly wound and it and lends itself to other things, other personality traits. Okay, now I, I will say that, well, first of all, as a kid, yeah, I went I went through some hardships, I guess, a little bit, you know, some, some uh, some family shuffles happened, you know, in-laws, mm -hmm. outlaws, steps this, step outlaws. that type thing. Yeah. Uh, and as a kid, I do remember holding my poop all the time. I did not want to do number two. When I would go to my grandma's house, I remember I would go outside and I would go behind the bushes and squat down and like not poop. I would do that to hold in the poop. What were you afraid of? I don't I don't know. It was just I didn't want to go to the bathroom. You still do this but today? Like, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm glad no, you're not using no, the bathroom no. right I, now. I do remember that though. And even now, I I re there'll be moments when I'm like stressed about something and I realize that my my pucker string is puckered <laughs> up. Like Ugh. I'm just being honest Some with you. Some things you should keep to yourself. But, or share with the internet. And I have to make a decision, like literally on a weekly basis, I make a decision to- To depucker? To depucker, to just relax a little bit down there. You should put a little note above your desk that says, depucker. <laughs> okay, well here's the good news for you, Link. Uh, most of those theories have been completely disproven. There is probably no connection there. Anal retentive? But the term anal retentive has been retained as a psychological term to describe someone who is probably similar to somebody who's OCPD, but the connection between the 18 to 36 months that's been brought into I don't, dispute. I don't know, I feel like. Now I've, you could bring it back, you could be a Freudian if you want to. You can well, make I, Freudian slips all the time I'm, on this I'm show. Not, yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not prepared to embrace everything that Freud uh, talked about, because I don't know all of it. But this one thing, he may have been onto something. Okay, so the bottom line is, uh, we were not making fun of obsessive compulsive disorder. We were tapping into that phenomenon that people tend to say, I have OCD, but it turns out they're probably talking about OCPD and most likely they're not, not even talking about a disorder, they're just talking about the fact that they just have an attention to detail. Which you you don't have to call anal retentiveness either. You could either, if you wanted to. But it, because it's, you know, it doesn't go over well at parties. Thanks for liking and commenting on this episode. You know what time it is. Hi, I'm Danny. And I'm Colton. And this is a massive freaking cliff. Whoa! <laughs> and it's time to spin the wheel of mythicality. Make sure you check out the My OCD song on the Rhett and Link channel. We made it with you in mind. That's right, also download the song on iTunes, click through to Good Mythical More where we discuss famous people with OCD and our personal encounter with Howie Mandel. Whoa! Morse code. Boop, 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 boop. Every night, I would pet him on the head seven times. Like this? Some, yeah, like literally in a countable manner. That's weird. I would pet him other times too. <laughs>